So, uh, I am very, very happy to start. And uh, in any case, uh, it's out of question that we would terminate after <laughs> the, the moment which has been uh, said. And uh, uh, I remind all of us that we are supposed to terminate exactly at seven, seven sharp. So uh, usually, of course, uh, these uh, workshops are uh, very active, very vivid. We, uh, uh, the interest of such a workshop is that we can exchange views. It's totally informal, but we have nevertheless, and it's uh, indispensable, a number of introductory remarks. Uh, I uh, have to say just one word, if, if I can, uh, to introduce those who are the introductory remarks uh, speakers. Uh, and um, I uh, will mention Abdulaziz al Gukhair. Forgive me is, <laughs> if it is not uh, well pronounced. Perfect. That's very kind of you. Chairman of the Board of Directors of Mashrek Bank. He is also the chair of the banks in the country. And uh, to that extent, uh, is of course, has a lot of responsibilities which are going even beyond the Mashrek Bank itself. He is also members of the board of directors of Abdullah Al Kohair Group of Companies, which I understand is a very, very important business group in the United Arab Emirates, uh, with a reach on all the Middle East and operation beyond the Middle East in 20 countries. So. Uh, we are all impressed, uh, Your Excellency, by uh, your um, experience and responsibilities. I will go on, if you permit. You will be the first speaker, but I'm going to introduce the other speakers. So we don't have Bertrand Badré because he is in Dubai, and uh, he participated, I understand, in the French Pavilion in, in Dubai, and that's the reason why he could not be uh, with us as uh, foreseen. Uh, we have Raid Sharafeddin, Central and Commercial Banker, former Vice Governor of the Central Bank of Lebanon. So both experience of Central Bank and the experience of a Commercial Banker, and also an international strategist in Central Banking, Regulation, Supervision, Financial Markets, and uh, again, uh, a lot of experience both in the public sector as well as in the private sector. So thank you so much for having accepted to come. I know that you will discreetly <laughs> escape because <laughs> you have to, to, ta to take a flight. Uh, 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 but nevertheless, you will participate. Of course, make the introductory remarks and participate in the first debate. Serge Ecuy, President of the West African Development Bank. Monsieur le Président, c'est un honneur et un plaisir de, de vous accueillir. Uh, you, have, uh, you are President and Chairman of the Board of the West African Development Bank since uh, August uh, 2020. And uh, before, you were, you were yourself also in the private sector with very, very important responsibilities in the UK, in uh, uh, Asia, in Africa, uh, in, uh, and, and you, are, if I may, have uh, gone on all the uh, banking, commercial banking activity that uh, one can imagine. And you've been uh, uh, chief ex executive officer at the Hong Kong-based bank. So all taken into account a unique experience, uh, and uh, we are so happy to have you here, public and private experience. Jean-Claude Meyer, Vice Chairman International of Rothschild, uh, I <laughs> pronounced correctly in English. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, you were, <laughs> it's, it's an old story, but uh, you've been for a while in Lazare, and then uh, you were uh, in Rothschild. Uh, you have been before also in the public sector as an advisor of Datar, an office of the pr French Prime Minister, and you're presently Vice Chairman International of Rothschild uh, and Company, with again, a fantastic experience in investment banking, and uh, uh, I think it, it admirably complements uh, the experience of all the other speakers. And we have Jacques Michel, 
Chairman of BNP Paribas Middle East and Africa for Corporate and Institutional Banking. You uh, have the, this position uh, in BNP Paribas, uh, and you have yourself uh, a lot of experience. You were CEO and country head of BNP Paribas India, a member of the Executive Committee of BNP Paribas Asia Pacific, and before you were in other bank, commercial bank, particularly uh, yourself also in Hong Kong. I, I can see that Hong Kong, Hong Kong presence is uh, quite impressive around this table. So the idea is, again, to exchange views in the most vivid and, uh, I would say, spontaneous and candid fashion on the issues at stake I uh, seeing, looking at the uh, experience and uh, responsibilities of the speakers, I thought that uh, we could very much concentrate on finance, on uh, f seen from the public and private angle. But of course, I do not exclude at all that uh, uh, if any other of us has a messages to ship on the economy, on the economic problem, and particularly on what's uh, at the border, if I may, of uh, the real economy and, uh, and uh, finance and central banking, uh, including, of course, uh, your appreciation of what's happening as regards uh, inflation, I think it would be uh, very much welcome. So again, feel free to send all the messages that uh, you think appropriate in the circumstances and uh, be as provocative as possible in order for the uh, uh, audience uh, to react. Uh, and I expect the audience to react uh, very, very actively too, because w the benefit of these uh, workshops is really to, to have cross-fertilization between uh, our various, um, again, angles of vision experience. Um, let me only say one word uh, myself. Uh, I, I want to be the moderator and not a speaker amongst the others, but I would like only to suggest a few words precisely on inflation. Uh, clearly, to understand the present situation, we have to see that uh, in many countries, certainly in all advanced economies, the main problem over the last 10 years was inflation much too low, abnormally low inflation. Abnormally no inflation since uh, the last, uh, big, the, the previous big crisis of Lehman Brothers, creating a risk of materialization of deflation in the US, of course, in Japan, in Europe, in all uh, advanced economy, without exception. Even, even Switzerland was in that uh, situation. All advanced economy, very abnormal situation, not, uh, I would say, customary at all, not observed since World War II, apart Japan, again, which was more or less, uh, uh, I would say, in advance, ahead of the curve, if I may, in this uh, respect. So the accommodating policies of all advanced central banks in the advanced economy were due to this uh, abnormal situation. We avoided the deflation in all countries, but we had during 10 years a very, very accommodating policy through all possible means, conventional and non-conventional. Now we see that we are probably getting out of this very abnormal period. And I would say from my own standpoint, it's good. It's exactly what was uh, uh, expected from the policies, macro policies, and certainly monetary policies that were decided upon by the central banks uh, during 10 years. So I do not consider at all that it is a catastrophe that we have inflation. I consider first that it is exactly what uh, the central banks were aiming at. It's positive. That being said, of course, uh, it's only positive if uh, inflation is getting out of too low levels to be re-anchored in the inflation expectations, medium and long term, at the appropriate level and not to, uh, I would say, skyrocket uh, at a very high level, only to create 
ups and downs, ups and downs uh, that are not advisable at all. So, as you know, and I will conclude on that, we have a unique set of definition of price stability or goals as regards inflation. Very often I realize that I'm practically the only one to say that, but all central banks of the advanced economy, Japan, the US, the UK, and the ECB, not to speak of others, have the same definition of price stability, the same goal, 2% in the medium and long run. Uh, the policies have been reviewed in the US, in Europe, and uh, uh, there was no challenge for this arithmetic, if I may, definition of price stability. So that consensus was not decided upon in Basel, in meetings of the central banks. It was a convergence of analysis, but a remarkable convergence because, again, we have a single, I would say, uh, figure that is pronounced by all uh, those uh, advanced central banks. And I mentioned also en passant that uh, the four central banks I have been mentioning are issuing four currencies that are in the basket of currencies of the SDR together with the renminbi. And if uh, uh, the Chinese central banker was around this table, he would probably say 2% is not bad at all. I mean, it's more or less implicitly what we have in mind. So there is a, a very impressive global consensus on trying to anchor as solidly as possible in the medium and long run inflation expectations at that level. But uh, it's easy to say all that, but it's very complicated, of course, to be sure to reach that goal and to reach that stabilization of expectations in the medium and long run. Now, I will stop there and only mention your total liberty in your exposition, again, both in terms of uh, economics, if you have remarks on that, in terms of finance, private, public uh, responsibilities that uh, you have been exerting. And of course, uh, I would turn first to the first speaker,